Welcome back to Alpha Craft, and boy, do I have an exciting episode for you today. This one is for the Redstoners. And of course, when I say Redstoners, I mean this episode is going to have a lot of redstone going on in it, including this first uh, bit of the contraption for Cluecraft that I've created down here at the moment. I'm gonna try and do everything the way that I actually built it, and that was solving each of the little problems that I've got as I go through. Um, this thing here, you'll recognize this, right? This is an Impulse SV sorting system, ready to accept each of the 21 cards uh, for the game. So when the game finishes upstairs, There'll be a spot uh, in the cloak cupboard where uh, you can drop off all the cards. The system will sort them all out again and get them ready to deal for the next game. Uh, I will probably replace this hopper line with water at some point. I actually had a really weird thing happen in my testing world that I cannot explain when I switch to water. I actually lost cards. I, I don't know where they went. This is a very simple system, and I don't I can't explain it. They 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 went. But I guess the first thing I need to do, and this is the little treat to start this episode off, is to show you what's in this box right here. The hot bar is cleared so that I've got room to show you this. May I present to you the artwork that I have created for Cluecraft. Oh, where's some light? Here we go. This, oh, I'm so happy with how all of this have turned out. Now, remember, I think I said, uh, certainly with uh, the Holy Rollers cards, these cards can't be seen when you're holding onto them. So players can walk around the house, uh, walk around the mansion with these out, and other players can't see them. Now, remember, there are six who cards or six people cards, and I'll explain in a second what's going on here, but there are six who cards, there are six weapons and there are nine rooms in the mansion so we've got reverend green colonel mustard dr orchid mrs peacock professor plum and miss scarlet they're the people the murder can be committed with the wrench the rope the revolver the lead pipe the dagger and the candlestick in the study the lounge, the library, the kitchen, the hall, the dining room, the conservatory, the billiard room, or the ballroom. And now each of these cards will have a spot that they will be returned to in the system. It, look, it, it's kind of a bit of overkill to have an entire sorting system that will be waiting for a single card to be returned. Uh, and I've got them grouped just to make our lives easier. So the where, these are the where cards, and there are nine of them, six here and six are in here. I'll come to this in a second. Uh, although, actually, do, do take note that at the moment, all of this is lit up. Uh, those astute redstoners amongst you will know exactly what I'm trying to do in here. But hold on a second. I'll just put all of these these cards in and that there's the last one and so that's just sorting out the uh filtering system and of course with those cards in there we have sorted out everything into here and at the moment i just want to keep the single card in there and that will be the single card that is used through hello uh used through <laughs> i don't want you where did you come from that must have just been an uh, administrative error earlier. Uh, yeah, of course. So these single cards will be the cards that are used throughout the game. Stupid bats. Okay. Um, <laughs> so now that I've got all the cards uh, in the system here, uh, you can see that this is turned off. So this, I think it's called an AND gate. Uh, but this will any of uh, this entire circuit will be lit as soon as any of these cards are removed and that is a way for me to determine that the game is still waiting for cards to be returned so I can stop a new game from being dealt essentially uh, we're gonna have the card return up here so just to prove my point um, as soon as a card is returned or all the cards returned, this should turn off. Oh, perfect. Just like a plant. Because, <laughs> of course, I totally plan these episodes. All right, so now the next thing that I need to do, right, is... Well, there's two things. Uh, and where to start with all this has been the tricky thing to try and work out. There is going to be a control panel of sorts upstairs that... 
uh, hang on a minute, in, uh, over this side, uh, that um, lets you tell the system how many players there are and then deal the cards. Now, no matter how many players there are, Three cards, one each of the who, what, and where need to be removed and hidden away, and that is the solution for the game. The other remaining 18 cards need to be, as evenly as possible, dealt to uh, the number of players. So what we're going to work on at the moment is the little system that takes the cards out, uh, randomly deals one of each in one direction, uh, awful band, by the way, uh, one direction, and then... <laughs> And then the rest of the cards are randomised and sent on their way and we'll deal with the actual uh, distribution system a little bit later. So I need to clear some space. This is all going to happen out here and I'll be right back with you. All right, and now we have a little bit more of the system put together. There's a bit to go through quickly, but ultimately uh, we've got these three dispensers, one for the who, the what, and the where. And the great thing with a dispenser is that a single pulse gives you a random entity from inside it. And that's our dealing system, or our shuffling system, I should say. So uh, we've got all of the cards in here. And that is because of this distribution system, right? We've run hoppers underneath all of the barrels that had the cards in them from before. Uh, they're all locked now. They weren't to start with, which is why I've got them all through there. Uh, we've got this little network that runs all the way around here and locks everything by default. So they're all locked. So if cards were returned, they would be sitting in there until they are unlocked, which happens over here, of course. Now, there will be a little timing circuit uh, here in a minute that is, is triggered by a single pulse from above. When the timing circuit runs, it sends a signal through here, which in turn unlocks this, which uh, the timing will allow for every card to end up into their respective dispenser down here. Uh, so I'll, I'll play with that timing to make sure that that's right. Now, uh, this is a beautiful little falling edge detector. So when the signal arrives here, this, there's a... Mm -hmm, Sticky piston under here. Uh, that will pop up, but that does not have a chance to send any signal through here. Once the timing circuit makes sure that all of the cards have drained through the distribution system, uh, this signal will stop, which will let this fall, which will put down a single pulse into here and we'll get a single card from each. And that, of course, is the solution. So let me simulate this. Now, this obviously is only going to do a button length, uh, but all the cards are, are already out, so it doesn't really matter. So that unlocks and that sends the single pulse down here. And the solution for this round would have been Reverend Green in the conservatory with the wrench. And of course, every time we do that, and you know this, but I'm going to demonstrate it again, especially when I put the right cards in the right spot, Richard. The next game's solution will be... Dr. Orchid with the dagger in the kitchen. So there you go. You get the idea there of what's going on. So what's next, right, is uh, we need a little timing circuit down the back here so that that first pulse that comes through will allow us to split the output of this to go somewhere it will then trigger a uh, whole lot of pulses that will send the rest of the cards somewhere else. And I'm actually just realizing um, I might have made this all a bit too close for comfort. But I'm smart. I'm sure I can work this out. All right, leave this one with me and I'll come back when I've got uh, a little bit more built down here. Well, that ended up being just a little bit more complicated <laughs> than, than I remembered. Uh, as a bit of a, a visual clue, the black circuit is the inbound signal, right? And that actually gets us all the way through. I probably should have switched a bit earlier in here or, or added a third color. But anyway, the black, the black signal gets us all the way through to these gates opening and closing. So uh, the glass, I thought the glass would help. Doesn't really help. Uh, all the cards get loaded into these dispensers, and then uh, when the first three come out, that signal 
uh, continues around the back here and stays active for a little bit of time. Ignore this for a second. Uh, it's got this little delay circuit, so it actually stays active for a little bit of time. And that signal uh, opens this gate, right? Opens this gate and closes that one. So the water will come around here and we'll get just three cards delivered into that uh, dispenser or dropper. Doesn't matter at this point, but I think it's a dropper in there. Now, the trick is that after a very short uh, period of time, these gates need to close and then we can start activating these repeatedly to, to shuffle and deal all of the cards. Uh, and with that, we can also be activating these droppers to spew all the cards that end up in them uh, up into uh, further points that I haven't yet built yet. But it's really, it, it, it's simple enough that my brain could do it. Um, but I, I to totally understand that it looks a little bit crazy. The best thing I can probably do is just demonstrate it. So let's send the signal. We'll see three cards come out and into here. The rest of the cards will now come out and uh, be spewed out into there. So, that, oh, sorry. So, yeah, this little orange bit, right? Um, I've got another falling edge detector here. So uh, that initial signal will come through this delay clock and give us the one pulse and we'll open and close the gates until those three cards have gone around in there. We are picking that signal up, right? So on the way, uh, as that signal starts, this will pop up and not send a signal. As soon as that stops, this is the clever thing, right? As soon as that stops, we know that uh, the cards are already in there and the gates are closed. And so we can actually start... Uh, this little, uh, it's a half etho hopper clock. Oh, I'm not sure whose this is, but, um, oh, it's dark. Hold on. Actually, I better put all these cards away before, before I go much further and things despawn. Frill has been amazing and, uh, and given us, uh, given me the ability to put these cards on the server, but uh, I don't want to lose any. I don't want to have to hassle Frill every time I let cards despawn. <laughs> Right, where were we? Uh, the half ether half o'clock. Yeah, I'm not sure whose this is, but this just lets us get a little bit more of an extended delay than what one of these fading or delay clock things are. Uh, it's yeah, it's it's um it it runs. <laughs> It's not much more I can say about it. If you don't know what an etho hopper clock is or one of these things, um, a hopper clock, I don't know. It's a thing. Go look it up. Uh, yeah. So this this little falling edge detector here, uh, there's the there's the thing hiding under there. Um, as as this signal finishes to do the separation, we can then start uh, this little observer clock. So uh, watch it again, and I'll try to commentate. I don't. I haven't put stairs in to get out. Oh man, I should just get stairs. Sam out. Um, okay, you ready? Let's go. So first circuit, three cards. Gates open and close. That closes the falling edge thing. We get this observer clock. Everything is spewing out of there. So that signal's actually going back there to trigger them and also this at the same time. And of course, this would go up a little bubble column and be sent up to the house. And we've got the solution cards down here, which Miss Scarlet with the dagger in the library. All right, so that's the bulk of what I need to work on down here at the moment. I will just quickly put in the clock here. Uh, it will be exactly the same as this guy, uh, probably run a little bit longer. It needs to run for uh, the uh, uh, right amount of time for the furthest card, which will actually be this card here for the wrench. Yeah, because it's, it's the furthest number of hoppers away. Uh, for the wrench to work its way all the way. And yeah, I'll cover these with... Um, Composters as well, of course. Sorry, Pharrell. Uh, that wrench will have to work all its way over here. So uh, we need that amount of time to unlock this line, which is what I call the siphon system. Uh, that unlocks all of these, of course, which lets everything flow into here. And then as soon as that turns off, as we've, oh, as we've been doing <laughs> with this button here, as soon as that turns off and they're all drained, this guy does its falling edge and starts that circuit we've just been looking at. So let me throw that together and then I can show you this whole starting mechanism work.
Why don't you watch me throw this one together? Because uh, it's just, it's quite cool. Um, we need uh, those comparators there to work out if there's anything in these hoppers. Uh, on top of this, we'll go a regular piston on this side and a sticky piston uh, will go on the other side here. Uh, we put one of them on there. And I don't remember how many blocks this needs. I feel like it might be a full stack, but uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, we'll do some... No, surely it can't be. Let's do half a stack and we'll see if that's going to be enough. Uh, right. Okay. This comes up here. Oh, we might actually unintentionally set the system off. So let's just leave this disconnected. Up. Oh, I'm stuff. Nope. We're doing up. Oh. oh, that's got all. Oh, uh, oh, um, okay. Um, Okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. That's all right. <laughs> we can fix that. <laughs> um, uh, this needs a redstone dot up there. Oh, I'm going to need some more redstone. And this will need... Actually, this needs... Eh. Boop, boop. Ah, uh, this needs the redstone up on this layer. Uh, hey! Cut that out. Why are you... What's going on here? No! How? Hang on. I've broken it. Wait, wait. I've done a thing. Stop. <laughs> Let me make sure it's all hooked up right. That looks good to me. Uh, that looks right here. Okay. All, all right. And then a button over here just to trigger it. For now, uh, obviously that will be hooked up to upstairs. Right. Off that goes. Oh, now we're going to wait for the whole thing to finish. Hold on. Okay, I'm returning all of the cards into the system, and you'll see bit by bit. And look at this. This is so cool. Uh, they're all making their way back. Hopefully I got them all. Did I get them all? Boom, got them all. Okay, so that means they're all in. Uh oh parkour. Uh, <laughs> so we've got half a stack in here. Uh, let me put... Oh, don't... It's okay. Okay, that's going to run, but that's okay. There's no cards in there at the moment. Oh, okay, it, it, everything's hung together by thread. It's so dark again. Hang on a minute. Can I? Oh, yeah, it's night time. Let's go sleep. Ooh. Okay, flights up straight. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Okay, we've slept. Hey, look, it's an overworld. We haven't been up here yet this episode. <laughs> uh, let's go back in here. Oh, yes, very good. Okay. Uh, all the cards are in. We should see that the center lights are turned off. Nothing's running. Okay, let's see what happens. Boop. Uh, okay, all the lights have gone back on over there because cards are being distributed. Ooh, let's see how many cards make it out here. Uh, this should be enough time. Uh, yeah, it, that actually, it's still running. It's still running. Um, hold on a second. You'll see that stops. And that will trigger... Look at this. Hello, little guy. Hey, and we're off. Okay. Uh, three cards go in there. The rest of the cards come out here. And there should be 18 cards down here. Hang on. Let me get my inventory sorted. All right. Let's see if all 21 cards made it out. What have we got? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, um, uh, um, 21. That's 21 cards! Yeah, the timing is good. Uh, I do wonder if uh, we can then just make this circuit a little bit shorter. But that is it! That is that is the bulk of... Uh, that's Well, that's, that's the dealing system. We've now got to do the full distribution system. And that's going to come next. But we need to talk about the Holy Rollers table. Well, this is the state of the Holy Rollers casino table at the moment. <sighs> so we were talking last episode about the trouble I was having with the shuffling and dealing system over here and that once you've taken a few cards out, it's quite difficult or 
well, almost impossible to get more cards out of the deck. And I've been doing, <laughs> I've been doing just a little bit of work. And I think for the first time ever, well, I mean, this is such a redstone heavy episode that it kind of makes sense. But for the first time ever in an RT video, we are going to go whoo, to a redstone testing world. Can you believe it? Look at me, Mum. Yeah, you'd be proud. Actually, you don't know anything about Minecraft, Mum. But anyway, <laughs> let's go. I hope you all feel okay when you get over there. I know I'm going to feel a bit weird. Hello. Uh, this is a new format for me, and I'm not quite sure how this is going to go. You ready for this? I'm ready for this. Let's go. Uh, we are trying to solve a problem. The sorting system has a flaw, and if we were to constantly take cards out of this dropper, there will never be a card in there. We can only fit nine cards in, right? Once you take nine cards out of the system, uh, it's going to have a really hard time keeping any cards there for you to take anymore. So we've got to find a better solution. And that solution is a bit like you would get if you were playing a game of Texas Hold'em at home or if you're in a casino where they have a shoe or, or just a single deck uh, that is shuffled, then cards are dealt, and then uh, the, the cards are shuffled and then cards are dealt. There is constantly a place in which all of the shuffled cards are stored, which, you know, might be your hand, but we can't quite do that in Minecraft. What we need from there then, of course, is a system to deal uh, the cards and then a system when we're ready to reshuffle. And now a huge thank you to Exumavoid of the <clears throat> Hermitcraft variety, who has a video about a shuffling system he was making uh, that uses a mechanic that I would like to use here. He explains that if you have... Uh, storage with blocks in them, and you use hopper minecarts, uh, multiple hopper minecarts, that is, they will randomly draw items out of the storage. So we've got 52 cards in a deck. There are five slots in here. Nine hopper minecarts would give you 54 slots. So you could actually uh, put all of the cards into this chest, double chest, uh, run all of them through here and into there, and you'll actually get all of the cards shuffled really neatly. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that there means that we can shuffle all of the cards by placing them in this barrel uh, and then um, bringing them through this system here. So the next step then, of course, is having a system where we can, uh, at the right moment, draw cards out of here and bring them back up to feed them back through the shuffler. Now, there's a trick here, right? I need to lock this hopper until we're ready to shuffle the cards and keep this unlocked. But then while we're shuffling, we want to lock this hopper and unlock this so that cards will go through. And so we have this, right? You're all going to know what this is. This is a vertical item transport system. Uh, you've got droppers running up here. There is a comparator that can tell when there's an item in here and sends a signal around here. And you've got the observers that fire pulses into these to push the items up. So for example, yeah, we'll pop that in there. And you can see that it travels perfectly. Oh, no. Well, Uh-oh. <clears throat> it travels perfectly up to there and is immediately... <laughs> it's now sitting in one of these. Sitting in one of these things here. So um, I've set up these couple of little torch uh, solutions. So this one is locking the exit system. This is the... Uh, um, this is the sorting system one. Oh, this is all falling apart. Uh, hang on, let's get it. <laughs> Let's get a lever because if I now turn on sorting, you'll see. Huh. Oh, I put all the cards in. Okay, so, right. This now is sending all of the cards up through here into this, but they're being immediately drawn out into there. Uh, this is right. This is right. This is right. Oh, there was my block because it got to... Okay. Okay. The sorting system is finished, and as you'll see, the cards and my block 
perfect are coming through. Did that make sense? I forgot to even show you before I hit that that I'd put all the cards in this double chest. So we've got all the cards in, and uh, they were in color and suit order, actually. Um, hang on. Suit and number order, value order. I can do this. Well done, Richard. Uh, and they've now actually come through all quite well shuffled. So let me do that again. What have we got? 10, 5, 3, king at the top. Uh, if we send all the cards through... And yeah, look, that does take just a few seconds, but that's okay. This will all be on a timer. That sends them all up there. We unlock this. The cards have been shuffled and they filter their way back through. And look, all beautifully shuffled. So yes, look, there's a little bit of time between each game. But honestly, when you're having a social game with friends, I think you'll realize uh, there is just... It, it, this is fine. This is absolutely fine. So uh, there's our shuffling system. We've now got the dealing system. And this is pretty much exactly what you saw before. Uh, oh, actually, there is one more thing I want to add. Uh, we have barrels in the design, obviously, uh, back in, uh, in Holy Rollers. Now... I want to have a barrel, uh, a barrel that comes into here. Let me try. Yeah, listen, I think, I think, can I put a torch on there? And that should stay powered. And I think I'll then put this in here and this can be a barrel up on the table. Right. Yes. This is the barrel that's up on the table. So this is the card return system. When you're finished uh, a round of cards, you drop them in this barrel and they'll actually stay in here so that you can track how many you've used before you then run the shuffler. And then of course, when you run the shuffler, that will unlock these will go back in the mix. Anything left in here will go back into the mix and they will all be shuffled and returned back into here once the timer executes. And I'll talk about that in just a second. And as all the cards are returned back in here, the next thing I want to just quickly talk about is oh, 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 the card distribution system. Now, this uh, can be exactly the same as it was before. We're going to use pulses that come through to unlock... Uh, items from here. And again, this is going to be the table level, right? We're going to have these out next to the table. Ooh, I think what I will do is have this barrel, I guess, over here. And I'll bring... Oh, let me, let me throw this together and I'll show you exactly what I'm going to do. And here we go. And look, you might think this is a little bit of overkill, but... Uh... <laughs> It's exactly the same system over this side so that when a card comes out here, I'll come back and explain a little bit of funkiness here in a second. When a card comes out there, it's delivered into that dropper. Uh, this little comparator circuit picks it up and sends it up here. Now, listen, if I didn't mind and I, I came up with a design that didn't have these side by side, uh, you could wrap this around the corner and move all of this across one and then have them uh, pretty much... In, in alignment, but you know what? This is all going underground, so that's fine. But the weird little bit here, it, uh, this has got to go down one because if this, hmm, am I going to lose car? If, if this is horizontal, a la that here, the locking mechanism ends up with a card always being stuck in there. Someone is going to explain why it's the whole hopper going down versus across thing. But when, it, when this hopper goes down into these and we lock it, n not a single card gets pulled out, which is sort of what you want, right? You want everything, all 52 cards in there mixed up. So let me demonstrate. We uh, let one card out with that and we get the ace delivered. Uh, so the next card will be the seven. You won't see this, of course. This is essentially the shoe that you would, you would get in a casino. Uh, deliver another card. Now, I might actually keep... Um, I might keep the note block solution uh, on, on AlphaCraft at Holy Rollers because you can actually be quite quick with the mechanism, so much more so than buttons. So I think we might do that. Now, when we're done, let's return cards. We can see how many we've used. So, of course, when you pretty much fill this up, 
uh, you're going to want to do a full shuffle anyway. Uh, I'm sure any professional uh, um, croupiers, whatever, um, would better tell me <laughs> tell me the exact ratio that should be going for. I think we call that deck penetration, perhaps. But listen, enough of that. Uh, now, if we do a full shuffle, which at the moment we've got to come in here and flick the thing. Uh, the cards will come out of there. Beautiful. They'll be coming out of here. Beautiful. They'll all be getting joined in here to some degree, but straight away passing through here. Huh. And that makes me think that that could probably just be a single chest because they never get locked in there. But you... Or do they? Wait. Have I not put enough... How many did I... Wait. Huh? Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. It should be 11. Can I fit 11 of these here? Oh, yeah. My brain's good. It does maths. Okay. I'm just going to go over into the corner and um, crack out my textbooks. And... <clears throat> And there we go. So, yeah, a little bit of funkiness. I've got to use these repeaters just to stop things from overlapping here. But this uh, this timing circuit is 60 items, I think, is just enough time to unlock all of this uh, and let it run through the system. Uh, so let me demonstrate this for you if I... Uh, power this up, redstone block moves across, the items start moving through, and we are emptying the chest. Oh, this is amazing. And then at the end of that timing circuit, this should go back, and that now essentially puts the system back into ready-to-deal mode. Uh, one thing I will do is hook up a bell so that when this returns back over here, we hear a bell ring, and that means, look, you're right to deal. Uh, even if these haven't finished sorting out yet, you can... You can go. So just to recap, uh, we've got the shoe. Essentially, this is the spot where the cards are all shuffled together. Uh, this is the mechanism that puts all the cards into the loop to do the shuffle. It is the hopper mine carts that have the essentially brains or the or the technical capability to shuffle cards as they're pulled out of the chest above. Uh, we've got the dealing mechanism that a single pulse here unlocks uh, this hopper, enough for one of these cards to come through. Uh, that is then delivered with the vertical system up to here. And, folks, we're done. That is that. Let's get back onto Alpha Craft. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. And I still haven't talked about that place yet, which is just amazing. And we're... <laughs> I'm gonna get there. Sorry, Bunny. You did all Phil. You did all that hard work, and I still haven't talked about it in my, <laughs> my episodes. Ah, uh, but this place is just looking astonishing. Look, it's uh, the, this server's unreal. The server's unreal. But listen, this is the Redstone episode, and we've got to wrap things up. So I want to show you that we are now back in action in here again. It's all updated here. Uh, we've got the card return barrel. We've got a deal card button thing. Uh, the, the dealt cards arrive here, and there's a little shuffle mechanism. Let me show you downstairs to start with. It, it's quite uh, complex. Uh, green is shuffling. Well, well, green is card rotation. Pink is dealing, and I only brought two colors of wool. So we've got... <laughs> Terra uh, terracotta as well. Uh, this is the delay. This is this is the actual shuffle timing system, uh, with a little bit of janky um, upwards redstone uh, to get to the redstone lamp up there. Uh, yeah, this is the clock. Uh, it is almost exactly fifty six items that need to pass through to shuffle all of the fifty four cards. Uh, this is exactly what you just saw, right? Uh, cards will come out here. I've been, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, you know what? I, I joke about how proud I am of this, but I am pretty proud of this. Um, the locking the system, it, it's just, it's just so simple, right? Um, the fact that this needs to be locked, that unlocked and that locked, and then they alternate has just made this 
So amazing. So amazing. Uh, so let me show you it in action. There's nothing I really need to explain in here. So let's go upstairs. And here we go. Now, with the signs above these, actually, uh, they don't make any sound. It, it counts as a block above it. And so um, uh, there's nothing in there, of course. Uh, you deal one and deal two. And we'll actually get two cards come out here. Oh, let's go. All right. I've got 13. The dealer has... Oh, that might have been too quick. Hang on. The dealer has... Hey, look at that. Not too quick. Five. A 13 to a five. I'm going to hit... But watch this be a 10. Dang it! All right. Well, dealer uh, wins that one. <laughs> now, this is the return system, right? And these will sit here until you hit shuffle. Let's do it another couple of hands. All right. Oh, I've got 20. Uh, dealer has 20. Um, now, of course, you wouldn't normally see the second card in it, but anyway, um, I think, I mean, yeah, let's just, um, <clears throat> all right, I have 14. The, oh, don't gamble, folks. This is, <laughs> this is ridiculous. All right, try again. I get two, dealer gets two. I get two, which are 10 and three. And dealer gets, oh, we've both got 13. All right, this will be interesting. Uh, let me draw myself another card. 17. Um, I'll stand on that because the, there's a good probability. Although if you're counting cards, how many tens have we had come out? Quite a few. <laughs> so let's see what the dealer gets. Uh, bang. What's that? 17. Uh, push. Okay, well, there you go. Oh, hang on. Normally you'd be taking these out of here, of course. Anyway, there you go. Now, shuffling. Uh, off you go. Light goes on to show that we're shuffling. Um, the interesting thing I'll just show you, in case you're interested in having a crack at this yourself, that light only comes on while, uh, while this is in that position. Now, in this position, all we're doing is siphoning cards out and putting them back up the top, right? Uh, there we go. Okay. Now... I turn the light off up there at that point to signal that shuffling's finished. It kind of hasn't, right? Cards are still coming in, but you will never be able to pull cards out of the system faster than they're coming back into here again. So by the time you even think to push the button, you've got enough to deal a couple of hands and and uh, and, and that's the way that it works. So listen, I am oh, I'm so happy with this. It, uh, it's just... You know, when you work out a solution to a problem, of course, the Exumavoids video, he, that was, that was the, that was the killer, right? Yes, 11. I know, my, my, I, I know my maths is really bad. Okay. Hey, buddy. You're looking. You've hit mute again, I reckon. I've been watching your videos. I know what you do. Huh? My mic seems, hang on. <laughs> Dude, what's with that mute button of yours? Have you know. got a bound a W or something? <laughs> hey, um, my question for you: Have you ever built anything in Minecraft that leaves you like absolutely conflicted? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 I've built this casino, and gambling's awful, and I hate it. But I also like socially playing cards with friends, right? So I'm kind right. of. I'm kind of a bit conflicted with this, and then I put it in a church. So I'm uh, then I kind of oh wow. oh my god You're going straight We're to hell doing this <laughs> ah demons from above <laughs> demons from above <laughs> wow you really did like <laughs> put a casino was, in a church yeah I did with dice and everything yeah yeah yeah, oh yeah I gosh, put dice dude. on the altar really just to rub it in it's just in case my dad ever watches and I want to upset him no honestly it's all very tongue in cheek it's not meant to upset anybody. <laughs> Uh, so I'm guessing you know uh, about the game of 21, Blackjack? Yeah, yeah. All right. Get as close to 21 as possible. Yeah, right? yeah. All right. Well, so this is the thing. Uh, I can go like this. You won't. Uh, yep. Um, I'll give you your two cards, uh, which are um, that, that, and that. And then I, um, I get two cards. Actually, I've done it in the wrong order because I can speed this whole process up if I click that before I come back across here. And you get to see the first of my cards. Um, but that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So, oh, uh, I'm going to, oh, oh, 
<laughs> yeah. Taylor Sands is 17. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is unfortunate. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to stay. You're going to stay? Stan. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, my next card is five. So I'm going to have to take, oh, I'm going to have to take on. another one. What's it going to be? Is it going to be a 10? It's not. It's a seven. Um, but, it, um, you win. You, yeah, I win. I win that You're one. You're at 18. Yeah. I'm at 15. See? Gambling sucks. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Yeah, uh, I know. Um, uh, well, yeah, we're pretty s pretty similar here. Um, a boop. A boop. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll take another one. <laughs> yeah. You didn't, uh, you didn't bring your basic strategy. Oh, man, I'm sorry. No good. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. you know, I'm at... <laughs> look, I'm at 14, and you've got an 8 showing. Oh, yeah. oops. That's all right. Uh... I'm just yeah. gonna take all these cards. Yeah, I've I've got extra. I've got, got some extras, but not many. I'll need Frill to make more if I lose too many. These ones were dealt, right? Oh uh, no no no! I uh, can't return over on this oh, side. Too of late. Here. That's all right. No, it's all right. It goes over here. Yeah, yeah, over on the left there. Um, boop! There you go. And I don't have blackjack. I'm but definitely heading. The the thing that I'm I'm gonna do with this one is that when we play here, it's gonna be very player friendly. So yeah, black blackjack is. Um, uh, oh, dude. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, oh what do I win? But nothing yet, nothing yet. And I've only got 20, so you've beat me. Oh, well, this place, this place. You didn't out. put it. <laughs> <laughs> we got to put wages in. Oh, so dude. yeah, this is working. And then, and then the shuffler over here, I hit this light comes on and says it's shuffling. And then, uh, once that goes off, we can start dealing in. All right. And you want, you want me to record too? Yeah. Oh, oh, well, I've already been recording. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah. Surprise. <laughs> I had no idea. Surprise. Surprise. I'm out of here, dude. I've got the footage. I'm going. Woo! Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I think I'm redstoned out uh, on this episode, and you probably are too, because this has been a long episode. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing this start to come together. It's fairly complicated, and it's only going to get worse because next episode... We're going to be starting to build up some of the mansion upstairs and some of the mechanics for how you actually start the game uh, and tell it how many players you're playing with and how the cards are then uh, automatically dealt to that number of players. Oh, but yeah, we're, we're hopefully nowhere near as redstone heavy next episode and we actually start to get into some of the design of this system. You know what? This is... Uh, I'm, 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 I'm so excited about this. I'm so excited, and I hope that you are looking forward to this mansion starting to come together. I think some of the alphas are uh, starting to get a bit, um, a bit excited to actually play this game. So I'm going to keep making progress, and the next episode, I can't wait to show you what the design of the mansion looks like upstairs. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, as always, thank you to my Patreons. We're going to come up in a second. And I can't wait to see you in the very next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>